chemistry, we have lots of different elements that form different types of bonds. We've got covalent molecular bonds, covalent network bonds, metallic bonds, and ionic bonds. So how do I know if I've got a covalent molecular substance? Covalent molecular substances have a fixed number of atoms and can be represented by one of four shapes. We have linear, angular, trigonal pyramidal, and tetrahedral. The types of elements which make up that compound are not enough to tell us the type of bond in which it exists. This is where we have to look at the properties of bonding. We first look at the physical properties of that compound. That's how they look. And what we're focusing on is the state of matter that that compound exists at room temperature. Is it a solid? Is it a liquid? Or is it a gas? We then focus on the chemical properties. That's how an element or a compound behaves. The two experiments that we can do to identify how that substance behaves is looking at conductivity and looking at solubility. Elements can change their state depending if we change the temperature. You can use the melting points and boiling points in the data booklet to determine the state of an element at different temperatures. Let's use water as an example. Water, which has the formula H2O, can exist as a solid in the form of ice. When we add temperature, i.e. heat a substance up, it can reach its melting point. The melting point of water is zero degrees. At this point, it changes from a solid to a liquid. If we add more temperature again, we can reach the boiling point. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees. This will change the state of matter from a liquid to a gas. We can use this state of matter grid to identify the state of matter of elements or compounds at room temperature. Room temperature is 25 degrees. That number on this scale would go above zero, but below 100 degrees. Therefore, water, H2O, is a liquid at room temperature. Let's take some covalent molecular substances and use the grid to identify the state of matter at room temperature. So if we look at bromine, we can see that it is covalent molecular. We can see that it has got a covalent bond as it's got a shared pair of electrons. This structure would be linear. What we want to do is we want to identify the melting point and boiling point of bromine from the data booklet. The melting point is minus 7 degrees Celsius and the boiling point is 59 degrees Celsius. Room temperature is 25. Where would 25 go in the scale between minus 7 and 59? It would go directly in the middle, which means that bromine is a liquid at room temperature. The next example is chlorine. Again, it's got the same shape. It is a covalent molecular substance and we can see that it has a shared pair of electrons which represents the covalent bond. We look up the melting point and boiling point of chlorine. The melting point is minus 101 degrees Celsius and the boiling point is minus 34 degrees Celsius. Where would 25 go on this scale? Well, 25 degrees is a positive number, which is higher than a negative number. So it would go above the minus 34 degrees Celsius, which tells us that chlorine is a gas at room temperature. Iodine, again, has the same shape of molecule. We look up the melting point of iodine, which is 114 degrees Celsius. The boiling point is 184 degrees Celsius. Where would 25 go on that scale? Well, 25 is smaller than 114, so it would go below that on the scale, which tells us that iodine is a solid at room temperature. We know that the formula for water is H2O. We can see in the covalent sharing diagram that we have a shared pair of electrons. We have two covalent bonds. 
Now we know that the formula for water is always H2O, which means that we always have two hydrogens that are directly attached to an oxygen atom. This is where we need to take it back to particle theory and look at how particles are arranged in a solid, liquid and gas. The particles in a solid are extremely close together. They are packed regularly and to change from a solid to a liquid, we know that we increase the temperature. What that allows the particles to do is vibrate and they get a little bit further apart. When we increase that temperature again, it allows the particles to vibrate even faster, which allows the particles to spread even further apart again. What we can see is that the bonds which are being broken are the weak intermolecular forces. These are the bonds between the particles. The strong covalent bonds stay intact. This is why the covalent molecular substances have low melting points and boiling points. Covalent molecular substances can exist as a solid, a liquid or a gas. They have low melting points and boiling points and this is because the weak intermolecular bonds, that's the bonds between the molecules, are broken. This past paper question is from the Intermediate 1, 2017, Multiple Choice 7. The diagram shows two types of bonds in water. Bonds between the atoms in the molecules and bonds between the molecules. Which line in the table correctly shows how strong these bonds are? If I was to represent this showing the covalent sharing diagram for water, what we can see is that there is an overlap between the oxygen atom and the hydrogen atoms in the molecule. We know that these are known as the covalent bonds. These are extremely strong. That's because all elements want to achieve stability by having a full, stable outer electron shell. Because of this, these bonds do not want to be broken. So therefore, the bonds between the atoms in molecules are extremely strong. Bonds between molecules, well, if we look at the dashed lines between the water molecules, these are representing the weak intermolecular forces. We know that water can change from a solid to a liquid to a gas extremely easily. That tells us that the strength of that bond must be weak. So therefore, the correct answer is multiple choice answer D. This past paper question is from the Intermediate 2, 2015, written to be part 1. A diagram of a molecule of chloroform is shown. One use of chloroform today is in the production of chlorodifluoromethane, CHClF2, and hydrogen chloride, HCl. Circle the correct words to complete the sentence. Chlorodifluoromethane exists as molecules. Bonds between the molecules are weak. The bonds within the molecules are strong. Remember, within is what are holding the atoms together. These are your strong covalent bonds. These are never broken. This past paper question is from the National 5, 2016, written 11C. Methoxyethane is a covalent molecular substance. It has a low boiling point and is a gas at room temperature. Circle the correct words to complete the sentence. Bonds between the molecules are weak and bonds within the molecule are strong. Now that we've looked at the physical properties, we want to then look at the chemical properties of a particular substance. The first one that we always look at is conductivity. There's a key definition that we have to know. Conductivity is the flow of charged particles. Flow means that something's able to move and we have to be able to identify the charged particle in a particular type of substance. In a covalent substance, we're looking at the atoms and the only charged particle that's able to move in an atom are the electrons. So when we're looking at a covalent substance, we're looking to see if the electrons are able to move. 
When we do this, we want to set up a circuit. We want to have some wires which are connected to a battery, which provides the energy for the particles to be able to move. A light bulb, which will show whether something can conduct or not. And we put a substance in the middle, which allows us to test that. If a substance is able to conduct, the light bulb will go on. And if a substance is unable to conduct electricity, the light bulb will stay out. Covalent molecular substances can never conduct electricity. This is because the electrons are not free to move. They are fixed in a covalent bond. This past paper question is from the National 5 2017 written 3D. Chloromethane is a covalent gas with a faint sweet odour. The structure of a chloromethane molecule is shown. Covalent and ionic compounds have different physical properties. Complete the table by circling the words which correctly describe the properties of the two compounds. So for this question, we're only going to go through the chloromethane gas. Now the question tells us that it is a gas at room temperature. That tells us that the melting point is low. We have to look at a covalent molecular substance. Remember, conductivity is the flow of charged particles. What is the name of the charged particle in a covalent bond? It is an electron. Are they able to move? No. Why not? Because the electrons are fixed in a bond, which means that for the covalent molecular substance, the melting point is low and it does not conduct electricity. The last property we look at is solubility. Solubility is the ability of a substance, which is normally known as a solute, to dissolve in a solvent, which is usually a liquid. If it is able to dissolve, we say that the substance is soluble. And if it is unable to dissolve, we say that the substance is insoluble. At this stage, all we need to know is that covalent molecular substances dissolve in water to form acidic solutions. When you go on to the acids and bases section, we'll go into this in a little bit more detail. This question is from the National 5 2016 Multiple Choice Question 6. Which line in the table shows the properties of an ionic substance? I'm going to change this to covalent molecular. So, I would like us to read the question backwards. We know that when we're looking at conductivity, conductivity is the flow of charged particles. What's the name of the charged particle in a covalent bond? It's electrons. And are the electrons able to move? No, because they are fixed in a bond. So it doesn't matter which state we're looking at, it never conducts. So at this point, the correct answer could be multiple choice A or multiple choice B. We then want to look at the physical properties. Covalent molecular, remember, have a fixed number of atoms. That means that they have one of four shapes. We know that because of that, they have the weak intermolecular forces, which can be broken. Because they have weak intermolecular forces, that tells us that they have low melting points and boiling points. So the correct answer to this question would be multiple choice answer A.